So the first thing people always ask me is this, why do I keep attracting the wrong people? Why do I keep attracting the wrong people? You really attract who you are. Praise the Lord. It's painful, but you attract who you are. You don't understand. There are some things that don't get my attention because of who I am. There are music channels. I don't know the channels, and I have a DSTV for years. Because... There's nothing in me that connects me to people dancing naked. So, it doesn't just connect. If you find yourself always attracting the wrong people, stop blaming the people because you're not accepting responsibility. Let me say something to you quickly. The most painful thing about relationship, if you want to hear the truth, is accepting responsibility. Because the thing about responsibility is, is this. It gives you the power to change it. Either you're single, either you're dating, either you're married, it makes no difference at all. So you need to ask yourself, you see, let me tell you something. Ever look up here. Whatever you deny, you cannot change. It's only the things you accept you can change. The major thing with relationship is that people lie to themselves. Uh, see, you sit down with a guy, and the guy is genuinely, he's, he's gotten himself to a point where he lies to himself. You sit down with a girl, and the girl is genuinely, the girl said, Pastor, I want anybody. Listen, you don't want anybody. You want a rich guy. Let's face it. You don't want anybody. You keep saying that nonsense. I've stayed a pastor for a lot to know you want a very guy that has a lot of money. See, you know the good thing? If you admit that's what you want, then we can begin to ask more questions. But because you don't even admit that, we can't fix it. Because is there anything wrong with wanting a rich guy? Nothing. It's just a preference. Who wants to have a burden? Nobody, including me. But watch this now. So the thing is that I want a rich guy. That's one. But I also want A, B, C, D. The second thing that, what is the other priority? What does rich mean? So when you say, well, Pastor, I don't want someone that is rich, you know, at least this man has a house. I'm going to ask you a question like, if a 30-year-old person has a house and they live in Nigeria, what job must they have been doing? Because I'm not saying that without one or two people that that will happen to. But those are abnormal. You want them to have a Range Rover at 30 years old. I'm older than that. I don't have a Range Rover. And listen to me, and I want to talk to the girls. Girls, guys don't understand you, but I also think you guys don't understand yourself. You don't want a rich guy. Should I tell you what you want? You want stability and financial security. But the way you've interpreted that means rich guy. Because you can date a person because his parents are rich, and he has no access to money. And you still will be what? Financially insecure. But when you know what you want is financial security, Financial security is what you want. I want to ask you, why do you tie your financial security to somebody else? Why not work it out yourself? Because, because that's the key thing. You want financial security. That's what you want. So when someone comes, when someone comes, so let me say this quickly because I always get this thing. Say, should you marry potentials? I think that's useless. I don't believe you marry potentials. I was like, why are you a pastor? You don't, I don't, that's useless. Never marry potentials. You know why? Some potentials never manifest. Someone says, but calm down. Someone says, how can you say as a pastor? Don't marry potential. Marry pattern. What is pattern? Pattern shows. Pattern demonstrates progression. So you can see it's not there, but you can see it's heading there. Potential shows it's there. But either it can manifest or not, we don't know. Pattern shows it's there. It's manifesting a degree. We think it can manifest in more degrees. So when my wife met me, I was pastoring a church. It wasn't as large as this. But she saw the church move from 10 people to 20 people, from 20 to 50, 50 to 100. It's still not a big church, but she could see what the pattern. Potential is, ah, I will have a church. I will do a church. 
I will have a church. I see it. I conceive it. I see it. I conceive it. And I never leave the same spot. Let's go to Exodus chapter 3. The Bible says that Moses kept the flock of, the, of Jethro, the father in law, verse 1, the priest of Miriam, Midian, and they left the flock to the backs of the, of the desert, and they came to the mountain of the Lord. And the angel appeared unto him and out of the fire, and he looked, and behold, the bush burnt, watch this now, the bush burnt with fire, and the bush was not what? Consumed. The Bible says, and Moses did what? And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see what? And see what? This great sight. Question. Watch this now. First thing. How does the bush get Moses' attention? The bush gets Moses' attention because the bush connects to something that Moses is that is in the bush. What was the bush? Watch this now. The bush was a metaphor of Israel. Israel was in was the bush. What was the fire? The, the, the affliction of Egypt upon the fact that Egypt afflicted them. Israel did not compress. Israel stayed alive. So when Moses saw the bush, there's something in him because he carried the vision that attracted him to the bush and called his attention to it. If you keep attracting the wrong people, ask yourself, what is in me calling for the attention? Because the way to be frustrated is this. So keep saying that, you know, because most people, because they don't want to blame themselves, and I don't think you should blame yourself in a negative way, what ha really happens to them is this. They don't ask themselves that, okay, this person did this, this person did that, but it's a pattern. What is in me is responsible for this pattern? I'll tell you something. I'm going to be vulnerable with you. So my wife was my first girlfriend. Someone says that good or bad has its challenges. Because its challenges is the fact that my wife had had other boyfriends. I'm naive. So all the lessons I had to learn and treat her, she was experiment. But were there other girls I genuinely fell in love with? Sure. There were people I genuinely fell in love with. But for some reason, it just couldn't really go ahead. Then I dated this girl that lied to me that she's broken up with her boyfriend. I didn't date her, but like, you know, we're almost like there. You know, almost there. And it says, you know, then she lied. Then her boyfriend popped up. And her boyfriend destroyed everything. And I met this girl. She was an usher in our church. But let me tell you something. What that did to me. I came to a place where I felt as if, I don't know what, that hurt me in such a way. I feel as if no girl can genuinely love me because I'm not a banker. I don't do immigration like you guys, you know. I'm not an oil and gas. I'm a pastor. Why would a girl want to marry a pastor? So I came to a conclusion. I said, any girl that I marry is going to settle for me. And I'm saying to you, the more negative you feel about yourself, the more negative your relationship will be. So much so, I began to say, oh, if I was a banker, and this is low self-esteem, because low self-esteem uses other things to boost your self-esteem. The right self-esteem is based on who you are. See, you know the problem with most of the girls here? Why some of them are not dating or single? I'm single. Because genuinely you feel you're not good enough. Straight down answer. You say, I'm too old. My breast size is not the perfect breast size. My face is the way it has to be. You know, you feel that way sincerely. And the problem is this. Even without you saying it, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Because you, not feel good, because you don't feel good enough, guess what happens? You send the aroma of what? Not being good enough to everybody. Then guess what? The people that you date will be people that think they can take advantage of you. Or the second category is this. The people that will avoid you because they feel you're a minus. But the question is this. Why do you feel like a minus? You feel like a minus because you keep looking at the negative things in your life. Have you ever talked to people like one Miss Nigeria, Miss this, Miss that? If you talk to them, if you know how insecure they feel about their bodies. 
Because, but the reason why you feel that way is that media has told you that for you to be loved, you have to be perfect. Oh, they say, oh, no, no, you want to be loved by girls? You need six pack. Oh, you know six pack? You're like all pack. You must be six foot high as a guy, have chest. And when you're coming, just be flinging your, your, your Range Rover car like this. Just be flinging like this and say, hey, babe. And go, oh, you know, they will just fall like a pack of cards. That can make us fall. It doesn't make them stay. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, girls, you, you know, you know the, 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 thing, the things you have, the things you have, you've told yourself that, you know, in, in this side of the world, yellow girls are in. I want to be, see, I want to be so real. I don't want to lie. The yellow girls are slim, maybe five, five six, seven-ish. If you do that, it's five, six, seven-ish, and everything is standing, you know, that, that's the perfect beauty. And you look at yourself, you're dark like me. And you're like, you really think there's something wrong with you? Because you're dark skinned. Let me tell you something. Look up, everybody. everybody. If you don't love yourself, who will love you? The problem is this do you love yourself? See, you don't understand. Let what, any girl come, um, Jennifer, come. You know, I want to show you something. If I don't love myself, what do I want to give to her? Nothing. This is, this is a perfect single life. Let everyone look at me. L leave Jennifer alone. This is a perfect single life. The perfect single life is this. I love myself so much. I'm saying, come and share out of my love and happiness. That's not what most relationship people are. Most relationship people are so looking for love. They say, I found love. Come and give me your love. Any. You don't understand. If you don't love yourself, you don't have love to give. If you don't love yourself, you don't have love to give. So, this is what you see in a relationship. Two people that are dating each other, and the two of them don't have love to give. So, they start sucking each other dry. So, you hear the word like, he's draining me. She's draining me. And the reason why is that when they should be sucking each other's love, there's no love. So, they start sucking each other. But, but the point is this, it comes from a place where you don't love yourself. Why don't you love yourself? You don't love yourself because you really have this pictures that are not true. You'll be like, you know, you'll be like, you know, some of you will be like, it's my hair. Some of you think it's my tail. See, I was that way. I felt I was this way. You don't understand. If I want to lose weight, I lose it for myself. Like, it's not about you. You don't understand. Have you seen some useless thing that cost a lot? Have you seen useless things that cost a lot before? Because sometimes <laughs> value is a function of perception. Yeah. Most times. Because for all the reasons why you think you're not worthy, and the sin is so bad as this. Once you think, once you're not lovable, it shows. You can't hide it. Even though you're sophisticated, you're educated, you're white, you're black, you're Jamaican, you're Namibian, you're South African, makes no difference. It's obvious you don't love yourself. Thank you. And you know how I, know, I know people don't love themselves? Let me just ask you a question. How much do you spend on yourself without connecting what you spend on yourself to somebody else? Most people spend on themselves when it's connected to somebody else. For example, uh, what do you call it? It's my friend's wedding. We will buy a shrubby of 100,000. But you can never buy a cloth for yourself, 100,000. You think your friend's wedding is more important than you. You are drinking some kind of alcohol. There are people here. One has to go to the spa. One has to go to a spa. Be because the thing is that if you don't love yourself, you can't want your self respect. And it shows all the time. So what we see is that there are people that chronically looking for love see you don't understand the best person that can give love to you is yourself and some of them even get married and in the marriage they are so disgusted because they're so struggling from the same thing why do you think you fall for all the wrong guys and the wrong girls the reason why is this you are so emotionally weak they can play you emotionally 
Because he can see the weakness. He can see. It's so there that this girl likes love. So, and it's funny. Oh, I love you. Oh, I love you. Oh, yeah. So, you, you, because, because, you, because you cannot see. Why can't you see? Someone says, well, I'm emo- and the thing is that you're, you're love deprived. It's wonderful. You know your world of your, you can fix it. If you're love deprived, fix it. See, you're grown up now. When you were young, you need someone to cook your food when you're hungry. Now when you're hungry, you sort yourself out. You are grown up now. If you feel you are love deprived, fill yourself with some love. How do you feel yourself with some love? Tell yourself, I love you. Look at him and say, Shinene, you're good. You're such a, you're wonderful. Listen, if you talk to yourself every day like this for 21 days, your perspective about yourself will change radically. Praise the Lord. You know, I don't joke with myself. So I just told my wife, like, let's go to just stay in an hotel. He said, what's happening? He said, nothing. Just let's just, <laughs> let's just chill. Let's just chill. Let's just going to have a good meal in a restaurant. I treat myself with respect. You don't need to treat me with respect. I treat myself with respect. So when you treat me, you just treat me what I give myself. So someone says, why do you think you're not lovable? The reason is simple. You keep focusing on all the negative in your life. You say, well, I don't have a great body. I don't have a great body. Have you seen your character before? How many girls, how many guys don't ever think like you? Have you seen the kind of character you are? You are the kind of person that dates a girl and you never cheat on her? This is one in a million. You, but you always say that, but I don't have money. You say, hey, I don't cheat. But what? when you don't cheat, what does that mean? Because what happens is that you keep on the value what you have and overvalue what you don't have. You keep on the value what you have and you keep overvaluing what you don't have. And that causes you to lose who you are. You say, well, what can I give a guy? Sister, you can pray for one hour. Very few girls can do that. You can, I'm telling you, how many girls do you know can do that? I know you're not yellow, but you have a job. I... Some of the guys, the kind of way you can stand with a woman, and you say, it means nothing because I don't have this. What happens is that you keep on the value in what you have. And listen to me. The moment you feel negative about yourself, you attract negative people. That, that's the thing, that's the bad thing about negative. The moment you feel negative, because look at Moses. Do you think about it? Moses was not the only shepherd that saw the fire. Why was Moses the only one that turned aside? Moses is the only one the fire meant something it too. Because it was a representation of something connected to him. The moment you feel negative, you begin to attract negative. How many times does a girl have to sleep with a guy? Not because she wants to, but to tell the guy something. Because, because you cannot express, you're so afraid. And, they, and in trying to secure a relationship with sex, how many times has he worked? Sorry, I knew that was hurting you, but you know, I, just, I couldn't help myself. Oh, he said, he said if I don't sleep with him, he'll break up with me. And has he not broken up? How many of you ever say, oh, it's stayed because we're having sex? Have you heard that before? <laughs> it's stayed because we're having sex. Glory to God. Let's move to First Samuel chapter 15. So one of the things, this, this is the first place I wanted to say. So this is you have to be virtually, this is the first time a single person. All single people write this down somewhere. Please, next week I want to remember, next week I'm going to give you this card to fill. And then I'm, I'm also trying to go, go to get my wife to preach to you so that we can do it together. You know, it's a, it's a good next week. Next week, I, I hope you can get all your friends to come. And please, when you're coming next week, bring a cake, bring a drink. Someone says, bring, I'm teaching you to give. It's difficult to date a stingy person. Don't you know that? Either it's a girl or a guy. It's just difficult. Please, we need more chairs at the back. Can you help me fix that? We, we need more chairs at the back. It's just difficult to say, you know, I'm a girl. A girl is not a license to be stingy. There's nothing attractive about stingy girls. And if you're a stingy guy, I have no word for you. If you don't have work, don't date. Praise God. 
don't keep stressing everybody all right let's get into it amen so we're coming next week let's all bring a cake let's all make some nice food let's all have so many things to do you know and you can even tell the leaders what you're bringing so we don't have too much of the same thing just for us to be together and, and you know the thing after the service why are you in a hurry to go away we're all single I should be in a hurry to go away. I'm married. Yeah, me, me, me and all our married friends are here. We should be in a hurry to go away. Not you. So I, have, I, I can't see anybody here. Because you're so blind. Oh, yeah. Because if, you, if you're not so blind, you understand that you are not, even where you are sitting is not by chance. Human beings are so short-sighted. It doesn't look like you walk away. You don't understand God wants you to have faith. So he doesn't put you near. He puts it, he doesn't put the apple in your hands. He puts it in your reach. Because by reaching it, you have to grow. So it makes you be kind to someone that there's no reason to be kind to. And that person becomes an extension of the blessing. Same thing that happens in your office. So, so girls are very nice to every other guy that is nice. Every other guy that is single. But to the gay men, they're very nasty. What you don't know is this. When they want to find out about you, they don't ask the other guys. They ask the gate men. The same thing with some guys also. The only person they want to drop off is what? The fine girls. What you don't know is that there's a popularity contest and says, who is this guy? Let's get deeper now. You want to get deeper right now? Let's get deeper. First Samuel chapter 15. So the first thing that you have to be really honest with yourself. The first thing is what? I have to be what? Honest. Let me, tell you, let me ask a question. Can, can, I, can I talk? Yes, sir. Online, please forgive me. Some of you don't know me and for the first time. Just, just know that I'm a honest pastor. Just leave me that way. You know, if you want a perfect pastor, flip to another YouTube church. Yeah. Well, if you want a honest pastor, flip here. Yeah. What, one question. One question. Do you want to marry or you want sex? See, you don't understand. This is the way it works. Because we're Christian, we package. So we go like, no, no, no I want to marry. Mm-mm-mm. What do you want is sex. You don't understand. What makes you really to choose is not the package, it's who you are. And until you admit that, okay, when I think of marriage, all I want is sex. You can fix it. So when you know that, all I want, the priority is sex. Will not say to you, you should want sex, but it can't be the priority. Because when it's the priority, you don't understand what will, be, what will get your attention will be very different. It will be once you see bomb. Yeah. The reason why is that it's where your attention is. I'll ask. Can I ask another question? Do you want to marry or you want to escape poverty? I just want to be honest. Do you, do you want to marry or you want to escape poverty? That's why many of you, you have friends that are married and their husband is very rich but mistreat them. And your friend understands all the mistreatment. You on the outside cannot get it. And you're saying that, what is wrong with you? The reason why is that does she say she wants husband? She wants money bag. You have the one that wants something else for her. Is that what she wants for herself? And before you turn to a men's prison, what about, what about guys? There are guys that are targeting girls from rich family with big son names. Hey! So once your name is Obasanjo, Dangote, Clinton. No matter who you are, you become attractive. It's the sort of name that makes you attractive. You know, there was one time someone about someone, the girl had passed. The guy did not notice. He said, Oh, hope you know that this person. It was a big son name. Let's assume Dangote. Then it's Dangote. Oh my god, she's very pretty. <laughs> she just, you know, because it's the son name that determines the beauty. Listen to me. This is the thing about see, single people, eh? When you're young, you can lie to yourself. But just remember you will pay for it when you're older. You will. 
You will. The person should not lie to is yourself. You can lie to the people. Don't, I mean, don't lie. But even if you have to lie, yourself, don't. I want to ask you, do you want to marry or you want to take a box? Do you want to marry or just to, people to talk about marriage? Be honest with yourself. Really honest. Some of you, if they can do wedding and don't be married, you will do wedding and not do marriage. Because what you just want is that wedding day. Hey, ah, oh, hey, and people are just dancing all around you. Hey, hey ah, oh, oh, you know, that's what you want. And it's okay, we can turn your bed into a wedding. The reason why I'm saying so, the first thing is to be, see, you don't understand. Someone goes to a doctor, she's pregnant. Doctor says, what's wrong with you? I have a headache. They will give you pills for headache. You can never get true help when you are not honest. Except with yourself. The second thing is this. The first one is be honest. Second thing, do you know what you want? Many of you don't know what you want. You don't even know what marriage is. You don't even know what you want. That's why when I see some people, when you date different kind of people, and I'm wondering, what is the correlation in all these people that you are dating? You're just dating because you think they're all different. You know, they're all different. Like, what's the, why? Why does you date? You date this, you date this, you date this. You, why? How come? But it's a reflection that you don't know what you want. So what happens is that at different phases of your life, your most pressing need determines who you date. But you cannot know what you want except you know where you're going. There was a girl that was my close friend and the reason why we couldn't date was this. She couldn't stop being a Catholic and I knew I was going to become a pastor. Her name is Jite. And no matter how close they were, I knew that we could not get married. We could not date. There's no point. Because I knew my future and it was a waste of time. When you know your future, you will know some part waste of time. It's not, see, sometimes I'm praying. I don't even know why you pray about something. You just know it's a waste of time. What am I praying about? So I want to date someone. I said, I want to be, I want to be a laundry model. Me. My laundry. It's not as if there's something wrong with what you want to do. But a laundry model cannot be a pastor. A pastor's wife. Because you will not open magazine, Jenny Veep. You will not see your pastor's wife on the front page. Ooh. You will not say, that's our mama in church. Vision helps you eliminate distraction. Vision helps you eliminate distractions. All right. So let's, let's read First Samuel chapter 15, verse 10. Let me just tell you the story quick. Let me just read just a bit to you. I'm going to close. First Samuel chapter 15. And, and you, you need to sing this in. First Samuel chapter 15. Verse 10. The Bible says, and this, the background is this, God told Saul, the first king of Israel, to go and kill the Amalekites because they had harmed Israel. And Saul came back and didn't do, he kept some things. He kept some things, didn't do some things. And when he came back, he didn't kill, the, he didn't kill all the animals. Then God told him, and, and, and listen, and, and let me read to you. And verse, verse 14, and verse 13, and Samuel came to Saul. This is Saul. Saul did not do everything God said. God is upset. Then Samuel said to Saul, Saul said to him, Blessed be thou of the Lord, for I have performed the commandment of the Lord. Eh? In his own sight, gosh, I've done so well. And this is what I always say to you. I said in this other services, what lens do you see life from? What lens do you see life from? This one lens here, this another lens here, what lens do you see life from? Once I wear this length, things get darker. If I wear the other length, things get brighter. Question, how do you determine what a good man is and a good woman is? These are things you need to ask yourself because either you do it consciously or it's somewhere inside of you. So once I met him in church, why did you do that? Question, as in, the place you meet someone does not matter. Don't you know that? You don't date places, you date persons. Praise God. 
You can meet a saint in a club. You can meet a sinner in church. It doesn't make a difference. What lens? Let me give another problem, another thing. So a lot, of, a lot of guys are here. You say all the girls want is money. See, let me tell you something. It's a poor way of thinking of women. Excellent, it's a poor way. What lens? What lens do you want? See, because once you think of women that way, that's what you're going to attract. You know how you attract them? This is all women want is money. So you, without you knowing, you'll start throwing money at her. And if she doesn't want money, she sees it as something you love to do, then she begins to place demand. Then you now say, I knew it as a soft prophecy. But you started it. Is it true that some girls like money? Of course, yes. But is it all girls? Of course not. But by telling that that's what you believe. And if that's what you believe, that's what you become. Glory to God. I said glory to God. So let's keep going. So the Bible says, and, and Samuel said to Saul, what that means, say this I'm going to. So, so Samuel said to Saul, what's the meaning of the bleating of the sheep? Like, why am I hearing the sheep bleating? Why am I hearing the, why am I, what's the meaning? Because he had brought the animals. So they're going, meh, meh. And Saul said, oh my God, these were the animals they brought from Amalek. And God says, but God said you should destroy them. What I'm saying is this, this is my key message. When God says, what is the meaning of this? So all of you here, most of you are single, but some of you are married, I know that. The question I want to ask you is this, what does marriage mean to you? What does marriage mean to you? You know why it's important to you? When I thought the married people, I couldn't really help them because we have to change it. Because they meant something and they're in it. But for all of you that are single, these single people, single people are the ones that have not tasted something, but they think they know what it is. Where are my drinks? Guy and girl volunteers, stand up. If you know you're very handsome, just stand up. If you're not very beautiful, just stand up. If you're not, you can just sit down. Okay, a girl, a girl stood up. Thank you. So just to let you know, this is my children's water bottle. I'm going to take it to school tomorrow. But I just filled it up and brought it to church. And, um, you know, so you can have this. And you can have this and just drink. So watch carefully. Have you drunk? Mm -hmm. Drink, 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 drink. Drink, drink, drink. I want to change the bottles. Because you're going to drink again. That's what I want you to drink. No, no. Have you drunk? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, have you, you, you have to talk to me. Don't say, uh-huh. Are you okay? Are you okay? Okay. Yeah. So, drink again. You know why? These two bottles have different content. One was just water. But the other one is a local medical concussion called Agbo. Watch what happens. This is what it is. The reason why both of them chose to drink in the first place was because I said so. They trust me. Your response to anything is who is talking to you. What marriage have you seen that once you get married? What marriage have you seen that must stay away from marriage? The second thing I want to see is this. The moment she drank the first concussion, it was bitter nasty. When I gave her water that can clear out all the bitter taste, did you notice? She was careful about drinking it. Because of the bad taste she had before, she was careful about what was good. The other guy that drank water first, I gave him the he didn't even bother. He just go, 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 go. Like, what? You know the thing? See something. Without experiencing marriage, you tasted it. And your taste is affecting the way you respond to it. So you see her, because she tasted a bad marriage, when I gave her water, she could not just gulp it because she was expecting what? S what? She was expecting something bitter. She was, so she was like, it's about to go up it. She was like, mm, no, 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 I don't want to go up it. The way she knew water, she drank it some more. But him, because it tasted good, when I say, go up, he says, let me go up some more. Why am I saying this to you? 
the meaning of marriage will determine your approach to marriage. Thank you. You can give it to him. The meaning of marriage to you will determine what? He says, what does this mean? So watch this now. Watch this now. I'll give an example of one of our pastors. Let me just give it. The meaning of marriage to you will even determine something else. The meaning of marriage will tell me what your perspective to marriage. This one, because we all look at life through a lens. Through one lens. And I'm going to explain why a lot of ladies and, and guys are single. We all look at life through what? A lens. What lens are you looking at life from? I look at lens from the meaning I give to life. So I give you an example. One of our pastors told me when I was doing the prep for this teaching. She said, I went to see his brother. And his brother is married with two kids or so. He said, and his brother just got up to a point and just said, he came home, and they were all in the sitting room. Five minutes after he came home, he just said, he just said, he just got angry. Hey! And sparked for the wife, sparked for the children. He said, before he knew it, all the wife went to the kitchen to cook. The children went down into the room. He said, ah, when he saw his brother was angry, he just got up to go into the room. His brother said, come back here. He said, why are you going to? He said, I just want to give you some time. He said, what's wrong with me? He said, I see you're not happy. He said, I'm happy. He said, as a man, when everywhere is calm, you have to charge it up. <laughs> ah. He said, you just enter your house, all oh, your wife is just quiet. He said, let me tell you, when these are quiet like this, next thing is below. The next thing they'll just tell you they need, they want, they need, they want something. So you just, you just, you just don't come there, just say, hey, everything shakes. He said, when everything shakes, everybody starts to order. You know the thing? The reason, you, you, you're laughing, but the reason why the guy behaves that way is what? The meaning he has given to marriage. What's the first meaning people give to marriage? And I help, I'm going to help you from the single side. A lot of people say, a lot of girls say, I spoke to a single girl. And you know, I was surprised because she's not married. You're like, eh, I can't announce one man marry me and imprison me. Oh, eh, no man can marry me leave my potential. I'm like, why are you saying this? You're not even married. Because a lot of people think that marriage is a prison. It will limit their potentials. Yes or no? No, come on now. Yes or no? You can hear the amount of yes. Question. If you think that marriage will limit your potential, do you think you'll get married? You will find it difficult. The reason is this. Your mind is designed to help you, to prevent you from evil. So when your mind knows that this is prison, as you, although you want to get married, your mind will be pulling you back. Say no. You'll be doing things to, to work against getting married. Not because you don't want to get married, but because in your mind, there's something that says marriage is a prison. So you will see, you wonder, why did I say that? Why did I do this? Why did I do that as a single person? The reason why you keep saying all those things is because in your mind, there's something that says that marriage is a negative. And because it's a negative, don't let me go towards it. As a matter of fact, when you meet a guy, if the guy says, oh, you know, in the first year of marriage, I want us to have a child. He says, hey, child, hmm, I know you're kind. I know you're kind. Ah, <laughs> this is kind of, you're not such a become housewife because after one child, you put on that one day. No, 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 no. See, uh, the thing is that it's not as if the guy is bad or the girl is bad. It's just the lens that marriage is a prison you see everything from. And that explains why a lot of driven guys and girls are delayed when it comes to marriage. Yeah? Because in their mind, marriage is a prison. And because your mind wants to help you, it's helping you not to go to prison. Should I prove it to you? Have you met guys that are in their late thirties before? You'll be like, you have everything going for you. Why are you not married? Oh, no, no, no. I'm still working on some things first before I get married. I see if their wife will distract them from their vision. Because in their mind, marriage limits potentials. But the Bible says two are better than one. But you say, my limit potential. So the challenge, the, this is the challenge. And this is the challenge. The challenge is that, but how do you, why do you think marriage is a prison? You have never been married before. You know marriage is a prison because you've heard stories from blogs, from Insta Life, from Insta Blog, from Nigeria, Bella Nigeria, Linda KG. You've heard stories from your friends. So if you, without being married, you've come to a conclusion that marriage is a prison. It's difficult. You know why it's difficult? Because here you are, you want to marry. Here you are, marriage is a prison. So when you think about it, you want to take one step towards marriage. Your mind says, he's prison. Go back, don't enter prison. 
I know people, as soon as they start studying, they get afraid. Have you met them before? As soon as they start studying, they get afraid. You know why? Because there's a negative connotation to marriage in their minds. Some of them get married. And when they get married, the marriage is always stressful. Because once you think marriage is a prison, you become a comrade. You know comrade? Hey, hey, hey. Free Mandela. Free Mandela. Free Nigeria. Hey, hey, hey. Free Shinene. Free Shinene. Free Victoria. Hey, hey. You become a comrade. It's about Luther. The second thing people think marriage is, is this. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Marriage is an escape. So, and unfortunately, this is for girls. Girls are looking for a savior, not your husband. The guy in the shiny armor that saves the princess from the hands of the beasts. What that does is that See how we paint the picture. So you see the girl saying, I have nothing to offer. All I've just come is to be saved. So you see, her, you want to marry, what do I do right now? Not to know. The next thing is marriage. In fact, one girl told me something. said that all my life problem, if I just marry, she'll be to be over. I said, how? Ah, she better be in my husband's house. Then my mother will have to come and tell me about her problem. I said, eh? Then when my husband comes, I'll tell my husband, my mother will sort it out. I said, eh? Just the way they think. Many of you, it's not monetary es um, escape. It's emotional. You have trouble with your mom. You have challenges with your brother. You are staying with someone you don't like. You say, once I marry, all this will be over. So once, see, because you have accommodation challenges and you stay with someone in Lagos that doesn't treat you well. So once the guy has a place, it's not as if you love him more. But that place, he because you spend one night there, that's where you feel like the queen. You enter Kuchi, nobody tells you anything. You enter Sin, nobody tells you anything. You sit down in, and sit and watch and play. You say, ah, this is right. You, all of a sudden, you'll be like, eh, eh. Because in the other place where you stay with your sister, when you cook, you don't cook well. When you do, you don't do well. Now you faint place that's nice. You say, ah, why would I marry him? And the thing is that because you are not aware that that simple thing is influencing your choice. Because... In your mind, marriage is an escape. Let me tell you something. The bad thing about this is, this is the bad thing about this. You really know what you should be doing, but you cannot do it because there's a compelling feeling on the inside that makes you not do it. So no matter how much you sit down with your friend and they can't say, you know, you can't do that. You just met him. You'll say, yes, it's true. Yes. Because you can't do what you know. You do what you feel. The third thing about marriage, the third reason, People marry, the thought feeling, negative feeling. People marry for status quo. Mostly guys. So guys, you just said it. Mm, the next thing is marriage. So those kind of guys, you know who they date? They date people and treat them like items. Because marriage is a face of life and functionality. I say, no, no, no. So they just meet someone today and say, hey, Asari, this is, this is, I like you. I will engage you next month. Let, let's get married in three months' time. Say, ah, no process. Because to them, she's not, how can she have a say? Marriage is a phase of life. I've now at that phase, let me go and get an item and add to it. So when you see them, you get angry. Don't, you, see, you don't understand. They, they don't understand what is moving them. They don't understand how they feel. It's not their fault. Because it's, you know, say, well, well, won't you marry? They, say, they get not serious. So watch this now. Because the girl refused to marry you in three months, you say she's not serious. Because in your mind, I'm ready. She should be ready. It's a face of life for me. Hey. And either they are born again or not, it doesn't matter. It doesn't affect this area at all. It's just the way they think about marriage. Some other people, marriage is warfare. They've seen their mother and their father fight. So, you know, they will hear... There's a movie on it to play for you, but we don't have copyright. That's why we couldn't play the movie. The name of the movie is Perfect Match. Have you watched it before? Ah. The guy said, see, because they think marriage is pain. Walk. The guy is in love with the girl. The guy's in love with him. And he says, let's get married. Let's date. He said, we can't date. This can be marriage. It's too much fun. He said, I like you. You like me. 
we are just having fun. This cannot be marriage. And I said, hey, see the girl with mental problem. Not mental, like emotional problem. Because in her mind, marriage has to be pain. War. That's why some of you, until the boy breaks down, you will not say yes. You must show him pain. pain. You must show him pain. pain. He must beg. Your brother must be him. You will close the door. and stuff. Just remember, when you get married, he will do his own back. That's a joke anyway, praise the Lord. Because he should forgive. But that's the truth. You don't know, you don't know. Because in your mind, if he lost me, ah, he would do this, he would do that. He would, it, see, they want to marry you, they don't want to go to a military school. Some of you guys, you say you are testing her. You will test and test and test. Excuse me, is she I can? He will pass I can test, pass MBA, pass you jam. But what is it? We want to marry. Some girls, you, you, you will come. If you want to date me, you come. You sit down here. Wait for me. I'm waiting. Yes, just wait for the guy. If you want to come, just go. I don't have time for all this kind of thing. Other people come. Are you the queen of the coast? But the re- See, let me tell you something. But the reason why you do that because in your heart, you feel as if until someone suffer, they don't love you. And the reason why you feel like that is because of the things you've attached to marriage. You need to ask yourself this. Where did I get this from? Because you got it from somewhere. You got it from somewhere. You need to ask yourself, who is framing your marital world? Can I, it's going on life, right? Don't let me call names. But is it that lady, Miss something? M-I-S-S-T? Is it the other one that has a TV show with a K? Because, because, let me tell you something. Just look at who is creating your marital model and look at their marriage and tell yourself, is this what I want? Because, you know the thing? You don't even check their results. You just love the persons. Because whoever is your model, you will repeat their results. Glory to God. So what does marriage mean to you? See, it's a question. If marriage is warfare to you, so for example, let me tell you something. When you're dating, there are some people you cannot marry. But if marriage is warfare to you, you see fight. Not normal fight though. Intense fight as normal. The guy will slap you and beat you. You say it's normal. It's love. What kind of stupid love is that? A man lays hands on you. You say it's love. But because your mind is used to it. That's how your father used to beat your mother. So it's a generation nothing. I want to ask you something. What does love mean to you? What does marriage mean to you? Because this is the reason why single, single, let me tell you something. So if marriage means escape to you, even if the guy doesn't treat you right, it doesn't matter because the priority of marriage to you is that I've escaped. So if someone says, no, 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 relax, do this, do that, they're just wasting their time. Oh. They're just, because in your mind, escape is marriage. And until you change what marriage means to you, you cannot change. Because let me tell you, let me tell you the things we want to do. This is how we, want, this is how we fix marriage. <laughs> this is how we fix marriage. W- 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 please come again. This is how we fix marriage. <laughs> this is how we fix marriage. You know, the, she has, she's delayed or she has married time. Um, she she's finding how to get married. This is how we fix marriage. You'll be like, girl... How is your boyfriend issue? Let me help you. See, let me tell you something. Eh? You wear dressed like this. Let's go to a place like this. Let's go to a place like that. Nonsense ideas. Let me tell you why I said so. Not because the ideas are not good. You don't change a person by telling them what to do. You change a person by changing how they think. Because if you tell them what they do, you know what? It's, they're going to do it for one month and get tired. But if you change how they think, they will change what they do naturally and stay at it for a long time. The major problem with the singles is that you guys came here expecting to tell you something to do. No. I want to change how you think. 
What's the one I want to change the first? That you are lovable. That people love you. Everybody wants to date you. People love you. So I say, <laughs> you see, you don't even believe that about yourself. See, this is me telling you as a pastor. I'm speaking prophetically to you. He's of me to see it and receive it. <laughs> people love me. Say, I'm lovable. I have so much love to give. I find, so, I find it easy to receive love. There's love all around me. That's the first thing. See, I, I'm not here to say, wear this, wear that, go here, go here. So I, said, I want a quality partner. The first thing is that become quality. How do you become quality? See, just by saying, I'm a quality person. See, the thing about it, it takes a quality person to live a quality life. You can't live a quality life without being a quality person. You have to be a quality person first before you live a quality life. How do you attract? You attract who you are. So it's not about the person. I'd be a quality person. When I'm a quality person, I go, and, I go out and eat and um, what's it given nice to Cactus. Is that a cactus? Because I'm a quality person. That's what quality people eat. I'm not trying to, you know, you know I, I go and eat cactus. As I'm eating the cactus, the guy, one guy goes, what brought you here? I'm like, excuse me. Must someone bring me here for me to enjoy myself? And the guy genuinely sees a shock. Not like faking it. You know some people go to cactus hoping to find somebody. No, you, you are not that kind of person. You're just treating yourself right. He said, no, no, no. He said, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm not that kind of person. You know, I can afford what I can. I take myself out. And I'm like, wow, this girl is such a plus. Can I get to know you? Because he just think the way you spoke about so see you don't understand once you're a quality person, we will not need to tell you this or that. You'll be taking quality steps. You you will just find yourself living quality life because that's who you are first. Praise God. The mistake singles make. When they say they are delayed, when they say they want money, they do everything on the outside. I want a boyfriend, get a car, live here, do this, do that. Let me tell you something. If you struggle on the mainland, if you move to Lucky, struggle continues. Because location does not change your struggle. It just redefines struggles. So on the mainland, your struggle was local. Here, it's refurbished. It's a branded struggle. You know what I'm saying? If you now move to Canada, it now becomes international struggle. You know what I'm talking about? It's international struggle. It's the same thing. If you move to British, just a British struggle, just British, British struggle, the same thing. And let me tell you something. Your breakthrough starts within. So let me tell you something. So I say, am I going to pray for you? I'm going to pray for you. But before I pray for you, something prayer cannot change the way you think. Prayer can walk a little there. But you have to just open yourself and say, you know what? How do you change your mind? I'm making a decision to become a quality person. I'm making the show to be lovable. How do you become lovable? As you go, see, I, I, when you're lovable, you walk that thing, you see guys and girls, hey, how are you guys doing? You look so good. Because I'm lovable, I give out love. See, it's easy for me to give out love. Do you like to tell you an experiment? When you get to work tomorrow, notice this. Start on the corridor. All the people that greet people they know they don't know are married women. All the ones I don't greet are single girls. Tomorrow, I say, just stand and watch. You know why? There's a place where the single girls are insecure. They never greet. They're not rude, they're just insecure. The married people, what are they looking for? They, even you see the guy say, they say, you will not even say hi. They, they, the way they will feel familiar. But the single people, hi. I'm, 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 I'm. Have you learned something today? Yes, sir. The Bible says, so what do you do today? The Bible says we are transformed by what? The renewing of a man. So you need to change your mindset. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Thank you. Stand on your feet, everyone. Stand on your feet, everyone. I want to lift up your hands towards you. I want to pray over you today. All of you that are married, thank you for just... All of you that are married, this is not a waste because you can teach your sons, teach your daughters. Other people can bring this to you. I can use to teach them. All of you that are here, listen to me. 
Everyone that is single that is feel ashamed about it, today give up your shame. Give up your shame. I want, I want that shame to die. That thing that says you are not lovable, I want it to die. I want to walk out of this door with a new self-image the way Christ sees you. Lift up your hands and give it up. Let the shame die. All of you online, let the shame die. And Father, I present all your people to you. Everywhere they've struggled maritally in their relationship. Today, let the struggle be over. The delay in your life is over. The mindset that sabotage your marital fulfillment is broken. In the name of Jesus Christ. Say with me, say, I walk in marital favor. Say, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I walk in marital favor. Say, in the name of Jesus Christ, I walk in marital blessing. I will not add to divorce statistics. In the name of Jesus Christ, I am loved. I am lovable. I have so much love to give. I have so much love to receive. Love is natural to me. My mindset support a healthy relationship and a healthy marriage. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Were you blessed today? Glory to God. Let's sit down for one minute. We'll close close the next five minutes. Glory to God. Just five minutes. Just, Just kind of slow down. I know a lot of you like, you know, really want to leave you know i want to so i want to follow this evening at about 9 p.m i'm doing an insta live so you can please put my instagram handle on the screen follow on, on instagram ask your friends to follow we can some of you have questions we can talk over it and all of those kind of things listen to me why should you come every sunday this month just one thing faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god and the miracle you receive is what by faith so the more you hear what will happen is that there'll be shifts there'll be a shift and please when you hear start changing your habits for example today if you're the one that doesn't greet people you have love to give and love to give away is that also so say hi to people oh good afternoon my name is Bolaji. what's your name good afternoon you know have you seen me always outside there i have so much love to give have you noticed that so much love to give i'm always saying to people i'm not one of those pastors that was screaming out somewhere no 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 i have so much love to give so much love to give i won't tell people come and take pictures with me i have so much love to give so i said wouldn't they misunderstand you that's their problem i can't control that i can only control what's in my control i have so much love to give so i said wouldn't they think you're all over them anybody can think anything i can only control what i can't control what you think i can only control what i do praise god 